you very much for joining me. I am chatting right now uh, with Lawrence Ralston. Lawrence is an old friend. I've known him for probably about 25 years. Watching the evolution of Lawrence Ralston has been really, really interesting. I, I, I met Lawrence for the first time when he was involved with a mining company uh, as one of the executives. Lawrence is a geologist. He went from there into starting his newsletter, Resource Opportunities. The newsletter evolved into one of the most successful newsletters in the world. Uh, he has now evolved to the point where he's a frequent speaker on an international level, probably spends more time in Europe and the Far East than he does at home. It's a pleasure to be with you, Lawrence. Thanks so much, buddy. Oh, Al, it's always a pleasure speaking with you, and thanks for the kind intro. Well, you know, I, you'd send me a check if you would. <laughs> I have a question for you. We are in a very, very interesting gold market right now. Gold is has gone since roughly 2001 from around $250 an ounce to where it is today as we're recording. It's about $1,150 an ounce, somewhat north of that. Uh, people, the question on everyone's mind is the future of commodities, not just gold, but gold, silver, base metals, etc. What are your observations on that? Gold is very different from the base metals. And let's start off with gold because gold is, is the most popular among the metal commodities. You know, gold is certainly going to go higher in the long term or medium term. And um, it, it's probably going to go a lot higher, but it's not necessarily going to go higher in a straight line. In fact, it's probably going to have, as it has done since 2001, it's going to have spikes and pullbacks. It's going to go up and then it's going to drop back and consolidate for a while. Over time, it's going to trend higher. I think for somebody that wants to be involved in the gold market, and, and being involved in the gold market is probably a good thing, owning bullion might be a little bit frustrating because you know, the, the pace of increase may not be as fast as people expect it to be. And, well, you and certainly, going to be if I interrupt you for a second, you certainly don't have the leverage with uh, bullion if you purchase bullion that you do with the gold shares. No question about that. I learned that from you a long time ago. Well, that's right. If, if you own a gold producer, you're going to get a lot more leverage. And in my opinion, the, the best leverage of all is to own a company that has an earlier stage deposit, a uh, exploration or development company. Now, I'm not talking about the companies that hope to find a gold deposit next week. You know, if, if they're successful, the return on those companies can be spectacular. But we all know that they're not always successful. Percentage is probably what? One in 50? Oh, it's probably less than that probably in, less than in that, terms yeah. if you take the whole universe. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a what I consider a real sweet spot where a company has made a discovery or has acquired um, an earlier stage prospect from somebody else, but the discovery's already been made. And often these things spike up when the discovery is first announced, and then they tend to pull back. And then there's, there's a period of, of years during which the deposit is explored, it's drilled out, it's confirmed, and then eventually developed and brought into production. During that process, the value of the company can increase tenfold or more. And that's the area where I've had the greatest success in, in the newsletter in terms of getting 10 times returns is on these companies that are in the post-discovery stage evolving through to production. You know, I've been working in this industry for close to 30 years now, certainly from a different standpoint than you have. We do, we do regulatory work for Canadian companies trading in the U.S. that have to report to the Securities and Exchange Commission. But basically, my, the, the universe of the companies that I'm familiar with is probably very, very similar to yours. And I have to say that it, it's, it's interesting when we're at social events or what have you with people and we're talking about the potential appreciation in some of our client companies. And the average investor simply doesn't understand that, that a, a share price appreciation of as much as 1,000 or 1,500 percent, I don't want to say it's commonplace within the junior resource sector, but, it's, uh, but it certainly is not that uncommon an occurrence. Well, that's very true. Um, if you select the companies carefully mm -hmm. um, and, and you bring it down to a short list of good prospects within that basket of, of prospects, chances are good, if, if you've selected the companies carefully, that, that you're going to get a couple of companies that provide very good returns, multi-times returns. Lawrence, well, let's talk a little bit about criteria. Now, now, you are an expert. You have a geological background. What, what criteria do you look for in a company before you will include them in your, in your newsletter, for example? Well, the most important thing that I look at uh, is, is the people behind the company. They have to be able, capable, they have to have the right background and experience. 
Um, and there's a lot of good people out there like that, but there's one other ingredient that I look for, which is a little bit harder to find and a little bit harder to define. And it's sort of a, a fire in the belly kind of attitude that a few people in the industry have that they just must succeed. It's called passion. There's passion, and absolutely. We're on exactly what, the same page with that. And, and you find the people with a passion, and, and they can overcome a lot of obstacles. But that, that's part of it. And the other thing, the project has to have merit. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that is very important to me is that the project has to have large-scale potential. There, there's not a lot of joy in developing um, a gold mine, for example, that produces 20 or 30 or 40, 50,000 ounces a year. Not really. You need the potential to be 100,000 or, or greater mm -hmm. because the real value comes when these little companies are taken over by the larger companies. And those takeovers are going to occur when there's, there's large-scale potential involved in the project. So that's the most important criteria. And then another thing that's very important is where is it located? Um, infrastructure is important, like if it's in a very remote location, it adds challenges and costs to the development. But also the, the political environment. Uh, there's a lot of areas where investors just don't want to go. And if you're not going to find a company comfortable investing in that jurisdiction, you're unlikely to find the takeover that's going to provide the big payoff for the investors. Two more questions. One question is, I am very, very concerned. Our radio show, show deals with financial, economic, and political, uh, political issues in the United States and also on an international level. Lawrence, I have to tell you, I am scared to death right now about the future of the economy, both in my country, the U.S., and on an international level. I, I am firmly convinced that the only place right now where my family and I can, can obtain insurance against what I think is going to be some significant financial disaster is by purchasing precious metals or precious metals related stocks. Would you agree or disagree? I disagree with the second part of your statement that uh, owning gold and um, gold related equities is, is a great um, investment for a number of reasons. It, it provides the insurance against mm -hmm. financial catastrophe. It provides insurance against um, the inevitability of further currency devaluations. Sure. And if you select the companies appropriately, you can also get the boost that comes as these companies evolve and, uh, and the projects move from early stage to production. So again, back to that, that sweet spot that I talked about earlier, you get the greatest leverage on, uh, to the gold market with the earlier stage, mm -hmm. and, and you get the chance for a big bump. Um, I, you know, just touching very briefly on the first part of your comment, mm -hmm. uh, problems in the economy around the world, they are very, very serious problems. You in, bet they are, yeah. in, in many parts of the world, my sense is the world is going to muddle through. Of course it will. And, and the United States may never achieve the kind of luxurious, grandeur, eloquent lifestyles that, that was enjoyed before the financial crisis hit. But other parts of the world are making up for that. And if you're looking at the metals markets, um, Asia is far more important to the metal markets than the United States and Western Europe are. Interesting point. You know, and I, I think your point is really well taken. I guess that I'm a little bit perhaps, uh, when it comes to some economic issues, maybe I have, I have difficulty seeing the forests or the trees in that I look at what's going on in the United States right now. And, you know, if you relate that to demand for, let's say, precious metals or, or base metals, your argument is certainly a lot more valid than mine is. But what I'm saying is I, I think for the average person, not for the average person, but for most people right now, I think they have to protect themselves with some type of insurance against you know, the impending disaster that you and I both agree will happen, certainly in North America, at least the United States. And, and I'm convinced that uh, precious metals and precious re uh, metals related investments are probably the soundest place to be. Well, I think everybody should have a, at least a part of their portfolio in some form of hard assets. And gold is, is the most liquid, it's the most common, mm -hmm. it's the easiest understood sure. of, of the hard asset type investments. So I, I would agree with you on that, yes. Let's close with two things. Number one, you have a great newsletter, Resource Opportunities. Tell our viewers about that. And number two, touch briefly, if you would, on the fund that you started uh, just a few months back. Well, the newsletter has been going for 12 years now. Mm -hmm. I focus on the kind of companies that we've been talking about here, the, these emerging gold and um, base metal and precious er, and, and uranium companies. Um, it, a lot of fun doing the newsletter. I travel all over the world researching um, companies and, and doing site visits and all the rest. And a spin-off from that is um, a fund that we're just launching at this moment where the fund will be investing 
in the kind of companies that we talk about in the newsletter. Great idea. You know, one of the most interesting things about my job and one of the most gratifying things about my job is I get to learn from the best in the world. And I got to tell you, Lawrence Ralston definitely falls into that category. Lawrence, thanks for your time. Thank you, Al. Great talking to you.